This is the final day of Rally Norway. Before the start of this event, the drivers were in no doubt about how tough these stages were going to be and how right they were. There's barely a car that's not spent at least a few seconds in a snowbank. For reigning world champion Sebastian Loeb, when he entered one such snowbank on stage 12, the seconds turned to minutes, around eight minutes in total. And he suffered a similar fate on the following stage. The reigning world champion has not been outside the top three in every WRC event he started since Australia 2005. That run looks like it's over. I tried hard. I said, OK, well, nothing to lose. And uh, we lost again. <laughs> He's out of contention, but Mikko Hirvonen is very much in contention. The young Ford driver may have collected his first win in Australia last year, but that was when Loeb was out injured and Gronholm went off the road early on. Nobody has any excuses here. If Hirvonen collects the win, he'll have beaten all his rivals fair and square. I've been now leading two days and 20 seconds, it's quite a comfortable lead. So it's quite easy to do a mistake and lose the rally, but I don't want to do that. I just need to keep on my rhythm and, uh, and continue tomorrow. How are you going to maintain that concentration you've had all weekend? I just basically need to go flat out. I mean, that's the best way to do, do it. If I start to, if I start to um, slow down, you start to do mistakes easily, and uh, then it goes wrong. But hopefully I'm going to find a good rhythm in the morning. Can you win? Yeah, I can. No problem. The man closest to him in the standings is his teammate Marcus Gronholm. He's been second best to Hirvonen since stage one, but providing he gets home safely, he'll have the reward of going top in the Drivers' Championship. Petter Solberg is looking for the reward of third place, and with it being top Norwegian in his home rally. But he'll start day three less than ten seconds in front of his brother Henning, and that family dispute should be the battle to watch today. I was actually planning to have a relaxing Sunday, but, <laughs> but obviously that will not happen. So uh, I'm sure uh, I'm sure we we have to uh, to push very hard tomorrow to try to keep the keep our place. Wherever Petter's gone this weekend, there's been a crowd, and the fans have turned out in force in the stages for Norway's debut in the WRC. Standings going into this final day. Hirvonen's lead over Gronholm is 19.3 seconds. And if Henning Solberg can get past his brother into third, that could mean an all four top three. Rally Norway is based around the city of Harmer. Four stages totaling 97 kilometers await the cruise today. And it ends with the 44 kilometer Elverum test, which has already won the reputation of being one of the toughest stages in the WRC. Dawn has barely arrived as the crews make their way to the stage known as Mountain. It's already proving to be one of the most spectacular tests on this new event, but also extremely challenging. Plenty of fans have also defied the cold to cheer on the two Solberg brothers. Stobart Ford's Henning is up first. It's an incredibly tricky stage up here, but on the first run through yesterday, Henning certainly appeared to enjoy every minute, and this is his first chance of the day to close the gap on his brother in third. So the pressure is on Solberg Jr., Petter. Subaru's number one begins the final morning just 9.9 seconds ahead and he really struggled on the mountain stage yesterday. He can't afford the same cautious approach today. Six left plus of a crash opens extra long of a 150 to turn on the scene. As well as the fight for third, there's also the small matter of the rally win to be decided today. Marcus Gronholm has 20 seconds to make up on his teammate if he's to claim his second consecutive victory. To rid the aerial shots here, and you really get a taste of the driving style needed to thrive on snow. The banks at the side of the road used by Marcus to bounce the rear of the car back on line. He has to be careful, though. These snow banks have ended the hopes of many this weekend, including reigning champion Sebastian Lowe. Miko Hirvonen, meanwhile, waits on the start line. His second ever WRC win, now almost within touching distance. 
away he goes. Just shy of 100 kilometers to come today. If he can keep Gronholm behind, this would be a real breakthrough event for the Finn. He's just centimeters away from these deep snowbanks at times. Incredible stuff. Rejoining Henning Solberg now as he closes on the finish of this 24 kilometer stage. It's already been a weekend to savour for the local star, and as his striking bright orange focus makes its way through the final few hundred metres, this is looking like a good performance from Henning. Here comes his time. Thirteen minutes, twenty-one and a half seconds. The speeds are a lot faster than yesterday's run. That's well over a minute better than his first attempt. Henning, the gap was nine point nine coming in. You've just blown Petter away on the splits at fourteen point nine. You're sixteen, so nearly seventeen seconds up on him. I am. Okay, good, very good. I try my best, and I am. Uh... Yes, I'm happy. So, as we've just heard, Petter's been struggling to match his brother's pace. He had no choice but to opt for a shorter tyre stud this morning, having run out of the longer type, which could be a disadvantage. We'll soon find out if he's been effective. Plus 19. Plus 19, we just heard from co-driver Phil Mills. It's not looking good for Petter. We were virtual spectator. Petter's a long, long way behind. His position is definitely under threat here. There's the target time he needs to beat to stop his brother stealing third place. And he's already passed it. The podium place is going to be Hennings. 100. Flat six left plus of a crest, 60, straight right of a crest, 40. Okay. Petter is now over 10 seconds behind. Well done, Petter. Much on the steam from the start. It yeah. was much better at the end when the fuel went downhill. Yeah. So another twist in the brotherly battle for third, but will there be any changes at the top of the leaderboard? Ronholm is risking as much as he dares, but with the championship to fight for and Loeb out of the scoring positions, there are limits. We're about to find out how this stage time compares to Henning Solberg's. He's going to be slower. Exactly seven seconds off the local hero's pace. Not a great start for Marcus. Marcus, the last split I have. It's point six between you and Mikko. Are you driving to those splits, or are you trying to just push him? I have no splits. <laughs> oh, no. It's okay, we are driving. Seems to be very similar pace to Miko, though. Yeah, we have the same car and same colors on the car, so it seems to go the same speed. <laughs> So no splits for Marcus to follow, who almost seems resigned to finishing second, but driving on the road after his teammate Hirvonen, of course, does have the luxury of driving to his compatriot split times, and with a buffer of nearly 20 seconds, he'll hope his hard work is already done. He's going to be very close to Gronholm's time. He's quicker. A good start to the day for Miko, seven tenths of a second up on the man in second. easy but you know as, as a team we, we know what's best for the team so we, we try to finish the rally now but it's uh, everything has to work so it's not over yet Sebastian Loeb's hopes of claiming the inaugural rally Norway win meanwhile are long gone yesterday afternoon's disaster has seen to that the Frenchman is nearly 18 minutes off the pace and unlikely to get anywhere near the point scoring places he does score another consolation stage win here though Matty Lapala, meanwhile, is running fifth. It's been a great performance from the Finn after his one and a half minutes of time penalties on day one. Without that, he'd actually be running in third. He's fourth fastest on this stage, and his position is looking comfortable with just a handful of stages remaining. Manfred Stoll is now over a minute behind in sixth. The Austrian is rarely outside the point scoring places. Just four times over the whole of last season did he fail to score, and it's been another consistent performance in Norway.
Gigi Gali is just over 10 seconds behind Manfred Stoll in seventh, while Chevy Pons completes the top eight. Hivenen's lead is now a level 20 seconds. So Hivenen is still getting everything right. Day three of Rally Norway continues after the break. Welcome back to Rally Norway, where we have just three stages remaining to decide the final outcome of this event. Can Miko Hirvonen hold on to his lead? And does Petter Solberg have a response to his brother's charge after losing third? Those contests aren't the only ones to keep an eye on this morning, though. Gigi Gali and Manfred Stoll have been quietly battling away for sixth place on the leaderboard. Gigi starts stage 16 just 10.4 seconds behind. Flat out section here and very bumpy. Oh, and he's overshot the junction there. And that's certainly not going to help him close on Stoll. A tremendously fast section of road here, and Manfred is certainly not holding back. Stoll is, of course, the leading Citroen in his OMV Chronos Zara, following a nightmare event for the two works C4 drivers. It's a good stage for the Austrian. Unsurprisingly, after the Italian's error, he beats Gali and extends his advantage to 14.1 seconds. And getting back to that enthralling battle for the final podium spot, Henning Solberg is well into the stage now. These aerial shots give a real taste of what it's like to drive through such flowing stages on snow. It's all about finding the perfect line to carry as much speed as possible from one bend to the next. It's a terrific display from Henning. He's fastest through stage 16 so far. And a Solberg on those shorter tyre studs has already lost out to his brother on the opening test of the day. He'll be desperate to get back in front of Henning and he's giving it everything here to match the Stobart fall man's pace. But he's going to be slower again. 100. Another 6.9 seconds lost. The deficit to his brother now 17 with only one long stage remaining. the competitive kilometers rapidly running out. Marcus Gronholm must be close to conceding defeat in his hopes of catching his teammates. The least he can do is keep the pressure up and hope Miko makes an error. One small mistake is all it would take and Marcus knows he's close enough to take advantage. Givenen and co-driver Yamo Leighton though have not put a foot wrong so far. He's always loved driving on snow and it's only been in the last two events here and in Sweden where he's finally been able to prove his potential. Constantly monitoring their performance compared to Gronholm's split times, they put in another controlled effort on stage 16. Their time is a little slower, but only 1.6 seconds, and that won't unduly concern Miko. On the short Harmer spectator stage, which is just over a kilometer long, Hivenen and Gronholm recorded exactly the same time. <laughs> While Peter Solberg took back a second from Henning. Six right minus. Six left minus long. 30 over finish. Okay, well, thanks. So, Hivenen's advantage over Gronholm, now 18.4 seconds. Henning Solberg now holds a lead of 16 seconds over his brother in the battle for third place. Back to the Viking ship arena for the final service halt next. And inside, the Henning Solberg fans are making sure that they stand out from the crowd. It's your home event. How important is it to you to get that place tonight? It's very, very important, but also a very new situation for me. So I hope the last stage can be 10 kilometers, then a bit easy. But uh, for 44 is more difficult, so I have to concentrate all the time. How are you going to approach it this afternoon mentally? Be calm and take, uh, take corner by corner. And you're not thinking about Petter at all? No, I'm thinking about that blue car, which I have to keep behind me. 
Uh, somebody asked me if your mum and dad have asked for team orders. Do you think they'll ask for team orders? <laughs> no, I don't think so. They wear uh, one blue jacket and one orange, so they are uh, split. <laughs> Everyone said yesterday the stage this afternoon is the trickiest of the event. How do you feel about tackling that this afternoon? Well, it's still long stage and it's for sure it's going to be difficult. Uh, it's going to be full, well not full gravel, but lots of gravel anyway. And uh, tires are going to be completely destroyed before the finish. So for sure it's going to be tricky and, and there's going to be some slippy breakings. But it's the uh, same conditions for Marcus as well. So hopefully he's not attacking anymore and uh, just stays behind. How nervous are you feeling? A little bit, not much. <laughs> I'm okay. The 44 kilometers of Elbrum stand between Miko Hermann and Victory. It's coming up after the break. Welcome back to Norway, and a chance now to catch up with a few of the drivers running outside the point scoring places. <laughs> Danny Sordo has had a torrid time of it on the snow event since his terrific runner-up position in Monte Carlo. He's on course to finish in a lowly 27th place. Subaru's Chris Atkinson has not fared much better. He was in the top eight on day one, but he was another victim of the snowbanks. He too is a long way outside the point scoring places. And it's rare that you see this man outside the podium places, let alone the top 15. Sebastian Loeb should still score a solitary manufacturer's point for Citroen, but for a man used to winning, that is scant consolation. 17-year-old Andreas Mikkelsen has enjoyed his outing in front of his home fans a lot more. He's running 13 in his privately entered Ford Focus. Two places ahead of him is another local privateer. Rune Delgio is the best of the Norwegians after the Solberg brothers. So on to the final stage of the first World Championship running of Rally Norway and a real sting in the tail, the 44-kilometer Elverum test. Chevy Pons has fought his way back from a sluggish start to a possible point-scoring finish in eighth. Oh, but he's gone straight on into that snowbank. So disappointment, so close to the finish for the Spanish driver. So this monster stage already claiming victims. Manfred Stolp, meanwhile, needs to keep up his concentration. He begins the stage just 12.7 seconds ahead of Gigi Gali. Oh, but there's late drama here for the OMV Kronos Citroen driver. He ran too wide there and is the latest victim to get caught in a snowbank. Pons and Stoll's misfortune provides a late opportunity for others. Jan Kopecki moves up to the final point scoring place in eighth. While Daniel Carlsen is up to seventh, it's the second points finish in succession for the Swede. Shishi Gali has an easy task to pass Manfred Stoll and claim sixth place. He's also now the leading Citroen driver in his privately entered Sara. Yanni Matilapala overcame a minute and a half of time penalties, secured fifth place, and achieved his first stage win along the way. Joining the rally leader Miko Hervonen now, he comes into this last stage with a lead of 18.4 seconds. It should be enough. Oh, but there's the Zara of Manfred Stoll, who's restarted after his off. The rally leader is delayed slightly getting past, and that'll be a worry for Miko. Oh, a nervous start, meanwhile, from third place Henning Solberg. Gex going eventually, but he's coming into this stage 16 seconds ahead of his brother Petter and will be desperate to achieve his second ever podium at his home event. But he's going to have to push hard to make up the time he lost at the start there. He's had the beating of his brother so far today and would be bitterly disappointed to fall at the final hurdle.
He's cleared the stage okay, and how worried is he about that sluggish getaway? The splits are looking like you're three seconds slower, but you had a gap of 16. Yeah, but he, he was 10 seconds in front of me on the first split, so... Oh! oh apologies for the lag. So, a nervous wait now for Henning. Can Petter take advantage of that stall and put in a blazing stage time? He needs to beat Henning by just over 16 seconds. He has a small hope with 44 kilometers to attack. Six left across that block. 16. But with the finish line Five fast approaching, he's 15. not going to get anywhere near that target time. He's well, slower, in fact, on the stage, and Petter remains fourth. Good try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good try. Waiting at the finish line, Henning is understandably delighted. Better, you've lost the podium position to Henning, but it's still your brother on there. Yeah, yeah of course, it's really, really good fun. He stopped at the start line now, and uh, of course, if we had the longest start, we could have, we could have done it, but he have longer for the stop, I have short, it's, uh, forget it, but I'm very happy with my result, and I did everything I could to, to, uh, to keep my place, and I'm very happy with fourth, very happy. Marcus Gronholm is heading for the top of the Drivers' Championship, if not the top of the podium. He still has a small chance of overhauling his teammate, though, after Miko's delay passing stall, so he's still driving at a fast pace on this difficult stage. Second overall to your teammate, but Sebastian takes no points. That must be a great pleasure for you and delight. Okay, yes, yes, he's good because Seb is strong in the championship. Mikko will be also, I think, this year. So, ah, it's good. It's good to take a second place, but uh, it could have been nice to win as well, but what can we do? Back with Hirvonen and then as he pushes as hard as he dares to limit the damage done when overtaking Stoll. But with just the last bend to come, he should be safe. And this secures the first Ford 1-2-3 finish since New Zealand in 1979. His lead is half, but no matter. Mika Hirvonen wins the first Rally Norway for Ford. Yeah. <laughs> it's the second in your career, but this one must be so, so special. You beat Marcus and Sebastian fair and square. Yeah, this is definitely our rate is higher than in Australia. I mean, leading in stage one and really fighting against Marcus and Sebastian and, and came into the finish as a winner. So, uh, fantastic rally. Absolutely fantastic. Hirvonen's final winning margin is 9.5 seconds, while Henning Solberg finished 16.5 seconds in front of Petter to make it a Ford 1-2-3. So 10 points to Hirvonen, but no manufacturer Citroens in the top eight. Malcolm, congratulations on a fantastic result this weekend. Yeah, really, really, really pleased. It's a great team result, 1-2-3. Uh, it hasn't happened for Ford since 1979. And um, Miko did a great job. Marcus did a great job. And for me, the real icing on the cake was Henning beating Petter on the final day to claim the final place on the podium. So uh, it's a great uh, weekend for us. A very mature performance from Miko as well. Yeah, I mean, he set off on the very first stage and he was quickest. And uh, he had two days of really intense pressure from Marcus and Sebastian. You know, we would get a reasonable lead and think, right, we can. I think they thought they could maybe just ease off a little bit. And then Sebastian would come back at them again. Uh, so, you know, the gap kept opening and widening. And uh, so it was, it was a big battle until uh, Sebastian went off. And there's confirmation that Gronholm now leads the Drivers' Championship. And Miko Hevenen also goes ahead of Loeb into second. Henning Solberg moves up to four. And Ford's dominance is also reflected in the manufacturer's standings, where they lead Citroen by 16 points, while Stobart Ford have come from fifth to overhaul Subaru and take third. From the snow of Scandinavia to the dust of Mexico for round four of the World Rally Championship, can last year's winner Loeb top the podium again and get back to winning ways? There's a full preview on WRC.com. For now, though, these moments will live long in the memory of Miko Hirvonen and the whole Ford team. A fabulous result and a great weekend to celebrate.
Road. That's it from Norway. Join us in North America next month for Rally Mexico.